All right, this Hangout is now live. What is this, Lady Ada? Hey, everybody, and welcome to another fabulous uh, Outside Honkin uh, show and tell. we got an exciting yeah. lineup of people, new people, old people, uh, standards, classics, and the new hotness. Um, we'll call on you in the order uh, that we see you in the boxes on the right on our screen. Just unmute your mic when we call on you. Show off your crafting, making, hacking, tools, laser cutters, soft robotics, cosplay, Radio Shack memorabilia, uh, copies of Ask an Engineer Third Edition, if you have it. Uh, no, the Art of Electronics. So, we don't. We don't have a book yet. Sorry, Art of Electronics. But this is like Ask an Engineer in book form. No, because we like, yeah. always say AE and then there's AOE. Yeah. Now, now I'm getting them confused. Sorry, I'm also a little tired. Um, yeah. Art of Electronics. Yeah, I wish I wrote this book and write this book. Okay, we'll start off with Tony D. Tony D. Ada Fruit Northwest. Northwest. How you doing this <laughs> week? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll show off uh, in the background. I have a printer bot simple metal uh, that I just got and and put together over the weekend. And so I've been learning about three D printing. I've never had a three D printer before. Uh, and I, I wanted to get something that I could build, like little enclosures for Arduino and Raspberry Pi projects and things like that. So I started off. I built um, Noah and Pedro the uh, Raspberry Pi case that they did. This is like the B plus case, and it's a really nice little case. Like it fits the Raspberry Pi perfectly. And the tolerances and things are great as far as the uh, printer bot goes when it prints it out. So, you know, I was really impressed that this is like the second thing I printed on it, and it came out really well uh, with that. And so uh, another thing I did was this is a little tentacle that's a uh, cell phone holder. So if I put, like, a cell phone on here, okay. it'll uh, hold it up. So it's kind of cool, like, neat little things. It's just it's fun that you can find something online and print it out. And, it, you know, it's, it's like the magic of the Star Trek replicator where it's like, oh, I want a cell phone holder. Okay, I'll go find one and print it out, and you know, an hour later, there I have it. Uh, and then this is a neat one. This is uh, one from Thingiverse that I found. Uh, that's an Arduino and a breadboard holder with a really nice little minimal design. So it's you know just this little orange band of plastic that just holds them with uh, tension oh, really nice. together. So yeah, it's it's pretty cool. And this is the kind of stuff that I like to be able to do with this. Is you know have like a project and maybe it needs a little custom enclosure or something like that to uh, put sensors and things like that together with it. Do you like the printer bot Simple Metal? Uh, yep, the Simple Metal, What's exactly. Kit, right? so. you got the one that's fully put together. Exactly, yeah. I think that's kind of the way to go. Um, you know. But the cool thing with the Simple, even though it's the assembled one, there's a lot of hacking that the whole community is learning to do with these printers. Yeah. So, uh, like there's things you can print out to help it print like Ninja Flex and things like that. So it's kind of a community that you're going into as far as like, you know, it's not just a product that's going to sit there and then you'll upgrade to a later one. You're always going to be hacking and building on it. Okay, so, yeah. sounds perfect for you. Well, well Mark and I were talking about this the other day, that there's this golden time for some technologies. Like, computers are really fun to build and, like, mess with. And then eventually, like, not as much. You know, a lot of computers are kind of sealed up, like a, a Mac or something like that. But 3D printers is still in that zone. Like, you could still have a lot of fun. And the uh, low-cost ones aren't that expensive. So the cost that you're putting into it... Um, is less than the, the value because it's fun to like build your own like extra extruder thing mm -hmm. or do all these projects, make replacement parts for itself. Um, I feel like there's we're, we're in the golden age of, of 3D printers still. There's not this final appliance that no one messes with. It's still it's still ripe for hacking. I think I think the printer was also in that nice yeah. spot. It, like it's, it's like it's, uh, the early homebrew computing also. You know where you had like the computer kits that people put together because you couldn't buy a real computer. So yeah. I think it's like in that stage today where you know it's this new thing and you can kind of jump in and really get your hands dirty with it. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for showing off our printer awesome. You can now uh, follow along with knowing Pedro. You should yep. <laughs> you make a little uh, gun blade. All, All right, right. Thanks, Tony Next D. Up. Speaking of knowing Pedro from Adafruit South. East, how are you doing today? Happy Wednesday. Hey, guys. what's up, everybody? We're doing okay. I Speaking think actually, actually, someone has chopped up the gun blade to fit on a printer box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, we are in the golden age, and materials is a big thing that's still coming up. We have some More awesome, new yeah, new material that we've been testing. This is bamboo fill. I think uh, everybody saw this in the chat room earlier today. So this is no processing right out of the um, printer. We tried doing like staining with wood, which actually does work. So you can get like a darker look on that. Or if you want to get like more of these cool little bands and make it look even more like bamboo, you can just simply change the temperature of the color oh, yeah. or the, te the temperature of the extruder will affect yes. you know how dark it comes out. So you can sort of burn it in there. That's pretty cool. Um, other thing is that yes, it's sturdy. We've tried other types of uh, wood fill, uh, lay fill mints before, mm -hmm. and they always came out like. Um, more like cardboard. Like not cardboard, as, not yeah. As, not as sturdy. Wouldn't work too well for and any this is from, from Colorfab. Who who made this filament? 
Yeah, color fab. So we got a sample of that in, and we are loving it. We definitely yeah, want to carry this. It looks pretty cool. I really like that it doesn't have um, too much cleanup, and the tolerances are pretty much spot on with PLA. Normally when you print with metal, you get some expansion or even some shrinkage. This is just like PLA. No heated bed required. It just prints. I like it. Okay. And it yeah. smells like wood when you're printing. It's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> A lot of wood smells smell. like wood. You don't like need a fireplace. Just get like a little printer. And... Ah, you're right. <laughs> it's funny how, how the house smells like a wood, a, a wood shop now. Anyway. Yeah, so one of the cool, cool things is like, you know, doing this with real wood, everybody knows it. You would have to, you know, mm -hmm. completely sand down the whole, you know, this whole side just to get this cool little bevel in. No, it's totally uh, bizarre. It's like, how did you get this, like, embossing? Uh, you got wood grain. It's cool. Yeah, it has, yeah, no, yeah. yeah because of the temperature, they change yeah. it, and then it burns a little bit, so it makes it look like it's mm -hmm. a real wood grain. Yeah, so you can make cool little patterns by changing that. Yeah. Like it looks like wood. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so we'll try doing like clear coat, clear coating next. Uh, so okay. still some more experiments sure. we want to do with that. And then we got like some brass fill, so we're still playing around with that. Um, weighs lighter brass than this time. Yeah, weighs. Last week it was bronze. This week it's brass and <laughs> <laughs> copper. And okay. Yeah, there's so there's steel, there's iron, oh, there's God. like magnet. There's a there's a, still a whole list of these. If to you want to see more about that, how about they tune into our show? We they tune into the show. Don't we have a show? We have yeah, a show. Yeah, don't we have, have a show. show. You have a show tomorrow. Get off right. my show. We'll talk all about this stuff because we're taking too much time. Anyway, sorry. No, <laughs> Thanks, okay. And not a lot of people know this, but Brassville and Bambooville were my uh, wrestler names. <laughs> not a lot of people know that. Okay. One more life. Brass. I don't like to talk Brassville about it. Brassville or, or Bambooville? I had two. two Brassville. Yeah. One was hard, a, hard like. One was bronze. after. One was after the steroids. Dean. Oh no. <laughs> Right. Look, you do what you have to do. Yeah, they should, we should have a wrestling. filament okay. called Phil Phil. Phil Phil? Okay. Color fab. All right. All right. Thanks, guys, for dealing with our stupid jokes. Next okay, up. next up. Um, Frey, F R E. Frey? Free? Frey? Unmute your mic and show us your project. Oh, we can't hear you. you uh oh. Make sure your microphone's the right mic. No. Still can't hear you. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. It does. It looks like we're going to have to do Maker Charades. So, show us your project. Just hold it up. And we're going to guess what it is. Oh, my God. It's about, <laughs> no. It's an, oh, oh, this is great. It's a cool clock. It has a little animated... Um, oh, can you hold it up a little bit more? Anything. Yeah, can you hold up just a, like another inch? Okay, okay, so this is an Arduino. Uh, and, oh, wait. You have 52 seconds. Yeah. And uh, and maybe the batteries are in. in this is an episode tubes. of 24, I think. This is episode no. <laughs> and so, what's happening is the little... Um, there's oh. like an Arduino or something. It's yeah. like an eight by eight, red, yellow, green matrix, yeah. and then the counter. And you have to diffuse it before the it, okay. the timing runs right, out. You have to diffuse it. How how do you diffuse it? Do you have to cut the wire? Uh oh. Okay, so you have to oh you so you have to plug in the right wires. Into the right locations. Get the okay. red wire. Get the green wire. And then normally some net, someone would say, "What if you're colorblind?" And you'd be like, "Well, you know, that's part of it." <laughs> All right. So, what happens? Can you hold it up? Let's let's watch the clock to the end. Oh, it, went oh, it restarted. It went ah, okay. okay. All right. right. Then it goes. All right. So that's how puzzle. many. That's how many seconds you have until the end. I get okay. it. Okay. All right. All right. I think we figured it out. Take a photo of it and send it to supportadatafruit.com and any write-up you want to do. And of course, you get it as seen on the show and tell yeah, sticker. Yeah, we'll totally vlog this. That's for, such a cool project. For any of the remaining pieces that are left over if it ever explodes. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Ray. Excellent work with Thanks, Maker Charade. Ray. Awesome project, too. All right. It's a little puzzle. Next up, Adian, puzzle how's it going? Puzzle. Welcome back. Soft Robotics was one of your previous projects. What are you cooking up this week? Hi. So uh, I've always been looking for a better solution to power my soft robotic projects besides just, like, hand-pumping it with a syringe. So um, I showed off the beginnings of this project um, a few weeks back, and... Um, Basically, it's an Arduino Micro with a uh, L29 3D driver chip, a uh, motor driver chip, and it's uh, controlling two solenoids and uh, two 5-volt uh, pumps here. And Ooh. let me just uh, demonstrate it. If I can manage the switch. There we go. Okay, starts with this one, and it's inflating and expanding, and then it deflates because the solenoid valve opened. And then next is this one. Uh, oh, that's cool. that cute. Inflates <laughs> it's like and deflates. Elephant trunk. And then it goes back to the other one and starts inflating. 
Okay, so how are these little pumps working out for you? They're, they're, even though they're small, they work pretty well? Yeah, I've uh, had a really good experience with them. Um, because basically, if you can kind of see this here, I have a little like Y junction for the uh, uh, quarter inch tubing. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I have a solenoid here and the pump here, and they're wired to the driver chip and the Arduino. And um, it's just to do this. Um, here, let me just get the code real quick. Yes, yeah, so you just use alternate the solenoids and the pump. Yeah, it's just pretty simple to uh, uh, like power and control, and uh, it's all through a nine volt battery. And um, uh, yeah, it also has a three D printed enclosure. And uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is good. All right, this well, continue to come back. We really like seeing the progress on this, and I don't think there's any other live Internet show that has soft robotics, just saying. So, yeah, this is <laughs> cool. Really yeah, cool. so uh, email support at adafruit.com. Um, you get to ask Ian on the show and tell sticker, as usual. Collect them, share them, save them. This is interesting. That we were talking over um, the, this week. We met with someone who, de who works in a cath lab. And they, they basically do very similar stuff. They have like you know they have these tubes and they put these balloons in it and they inflate them and then move them and deflate them and inflate. Like they they're basically doing soft robotics, but inside the heart yeah. to open up um, the arteries. So it's kind of neat. Like it's I, I like I see very a lot of similarities. Yeah, yeah. Biohacking. Yeah, I, mean, well, I don't know if I would insert those into your body, but um, I mean, I, the biomedical field is a is a huge application for soft robotics. So yeah. Totally. Because right. it's way easier to get air in than it is to get electrical wires and motors. You don't want to put a motor inside a body, but like yeah. a pump, it's... we got plenty of air, too. Air, we have a lot of air. It's not for sale okay, yet. Okay, thank you. And this is awesome. Please come back more. I'd yep. love to see your updates. All right, next up. Matt. Matt with the DEF CON hat. Matt, unmute your mic and show us your project. Hey, guys. This hey. is hey. Uh, cooking. Raspberry Pi 2 Airsoft Sentry Gun. Yes. <laughs> this is the uh, Adafruit Servo hat. And um, hold on one sec. Goes left and right. Uh oh. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Okay. That's scary. Whoa. All right. Oh, so you got um, pan tilt and everything. It's a little loud. That's uh, fine. But I also have a spray command, and I got a, I have a, a USB camera right here, so I can see the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> this is for defending your cubicle. Or what is this? Uh, what? this is for when I play airsoft against my friends. Okay, you're just gonna. I also win. have a uh, homemade RCXD that actually detonates a firecracker when oh, uh, cool. driving towards the enemy. So do you drop this somewhere and it's a sentry, and then they yeah. run into it and well, they? Two hundred meter range with uh, my Alpha Wi-Fi cards. Oh, uh, that's cool. So it's kind of like that scene in Aliens when they're trying. They have the little sentries and, and the aliens come up. Mm -hmm. And then, like you know, the the the, the clicker, the counter goes down, and yeah. then they stop at the end. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Totally. Right. Like okay. Cool. Okay. Oh wait, it's coming for me. Does it does it do motion detection too? That'd be really. Uh, yeah. It also shoots at anything that moves. That's excellent. <laughs> All right. Well, you get to add scene on the show and tell a sticker. That'll be the last thing someone sees before they get shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Right, All right, thank you so much, Matt. Email support at adafruit.com. And if you take any photos or have an instructable or any more information about it, send that to us, too. We'd like to post it up. It's a really cool Raspberry Pi-based um, project. I haven't seen a, um, a Century gun that does that with a Raspberry Pi yet. Yeah, we had we had someone who had, it didn't have, like, the camera, and it didn't do the full yeah. pan tilt. Yeah, no, this is a, Okay, this epic. Cool. Thank you, Matt. All right. Next up, Richard. Hey, Richard. Hey, Richard, how's it going? I'm your mic back. and show us your project. Hey guys, so I've been working uh, here at the Makerspace with a Whoa. friend of mine. Who oh my god, they shrunk Richard. Oh no, that's just a big wrench. Okay. Um, so he, he participates in a lot of uh, LARPs, and so uh, he had this idea for doing the, the wrench, and this is a, a foam wrench that you use basically for, for hitting people. Yeah. Um, and so we, we figured out a way to manufacture these uh, using our laser cutter and then also our CNC mill. Because uh, this foam actually mills up really nicely. But the big thing that I wanted to show today <laughs> is my LARP Warhammer. <laughs> yeah. So this, I'm going to scoot a little further back so you can see all of it. That's big. You're, you're into big foam projects. Yeah. yeah. But so this uh, has LEDs in it, and uh, I'm still working out the code and some of the sensors. But I have uh, one of the sound boards so it can trigger. Oh, that's cool. Sound effects. 
I, I'm still working out the, the LEDs right now. I, I'm using the, uh, the arc reactor flickering. Um, but uh, And I need to prep this for paint, but I wanted to leave the LEDs so I can show you guys before I did that. Oh, yeah. This is going to be awesome. So, so you're going you're gonna, to like, just whack people with it and it'll make funny noises? Yeah, so actually uh, what this is an idea I've had for a while to incorporate uh, game mechanics from a LARP into the device. Mm. And, and not have any buttons. So I'm using an accelerometer, the, the um, uh, Flora accelerometer magnetometer, mm -hmm. uh, to sense how you're wielding the weapon. And you wow. can use different moves by how you actually wield it. Oh, so like when you hold it, it charges up, and then you can like do it, and the LEDs will be brighter or something. OK, wow. Yeah, so you hold it still for like 30 seconds. Uh, and actually, this is, this is a hammer of healing. Oh, okay. If you hold it still for 30 seconds, you charge it up, and then you hit somebody with it, and you can heal their hit points. <laughs> um, but it also has uh, different attack maneuvers, so the more you swing it around, the more powerful the attack is. Wow. Uh, it. And uh, I got someone helping uh, to work on uh, interpreting some of the sensory data. Yeah, that is actually, that is tough to do, um, but definitely, I... I that would be really interesting to see what you come up with. I mean, like, definitely holding it still, that's not so bad, but, like, sensing motion, it, it's a hard problem. But check out, like, some of the, like, the quadcopter people have come up with way of, of analyzing the the sensors to, like, get position and stuff with, with like, um, AHRS and other libraries. Yeah, a lot of it, like, we're trying to figure out how you can determine if you complete a uh, full 360 rotation of the hammer. Mm. to activate a function. But ideally, I'd love to have it so that you can push essentially a record button and then perform an action and then have that assigned to a function. It yeah. make gamers, it'd make it really easy for gamers to program. I agree. Yeah, that's that's like machine learning. All right, please uh, come back and yeah. tell us how that works well, you out. Get, it's very curious. Yeah, you great. get two S you know, on the show and tell cool. stickers will, will seem tiny. There'll be little tiny specks on these massive instruments that you've created. All right. Thank you so much, Richard. Awesome. So, what is, what's the new phrase? Any sufficiently advanced form of technology is is going to is a form of is indistinguishable from LARPing. Yeah, <laughs> this, this magic is so advanced. It's indis, indis, indistinguishable from technology. Yeah, I like this. All okay, right. I'm too so tired. I can't remember my quotes. Okay, right. so we're going to go to Roberto and then wrap up with C. Scott. You each have about four or five minutes. Roberto, show us what you got. Uh, hello, everyone. Hey. Yo. I think I figured out how to share a screen. Um, so, can you all see a Raspberry Pi and a display connected to it? It's, it's, it's on its way. Got yes. it. It's upside down, but that's okay. Oh, no. Upside down or, or left to right uh, backwards? Left to right. Oh, man. I, all right. Well, maybe I can get what I'm, what I'm trying to do. But that's okay. We'll totally be able to figure this out. Yeah, so I have uh, a Java application written for, for this kit, and um, it's for controlling the um, the Raspberry Pi camera and so I'll, I'll run the app now and it'll turn on the LCD and you can go through the the menus which is pretty much uh, a snapshot where you just hit the the select button and it takes a, a picture and then the other mode is time-lapse where you know you can say specify in minutes seconds or hours uh, what the unit be should be for for you know the time-lapse so I'll just I'll just go through it real quick. Um, I know you can't really read the menus, but it's in uh, the mode selection. So if I go yeah. between modes, it shows that. And so I'll put it in uh, snapshot mode. And right now it's on off. But if I select the on mode, it'll actually take pictures. Um, so there's me. Hey. It's taken. Okay. So uh, every That's time you nice. hit the select, you have like the buttons in the menu, but then you can use the screen for the preview and stuff. Yeah, yeah, right side by side, it'll, it'll work like that. So I mentioned uh, the time-lapse mode has seconds, minutes, and hours. And so we use a select button to actually start it. And so if you want to decrease it, it's just, you know, the, the left button to go down. Uh, so right now it's set at 15 seconds, uh, every, every 15 seconds to take a picture. Okay. Uh, while we're waiting for that that 15 seconds, I wanted to mention the one cool thing about working on this project uh, that was a first for me was I was able to actually debug on the Raspberry Pi from NetBeans on uh, basically SSHing into the Raspberry Pi for the NetBeans debugger from my laptop. 
So that was really cool to be able to like step through on the Raspberry Pi. I mm -hmm. had some. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, I did have some issues. Yeah, so you can tell every 15 seconds it's. Yeah, it's like taking a photo. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was really cool, and uh, thanks for having me again and letting me share the the project. This is an awesome project. Thank you so Very much. Very cool. All right. Well, as usual, I'll send an email to supportedatafree.com, and you get it as seen on the show and tell sticker. I believe there's room at least on the LCD. I know a lot of people are interested in time lapse. So I'll put it on the back or something. All yeah. right. If you write this up, let us know because I think people would be really into it. And Where last but not least, this is a project I've been looking forward to seeing. See, Scott. Crow it up. Crow hey. it up. Hey. Uh, hopefully, you can hear me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, well, I've you know finished the machine, and the next week allowed me to uh, get my digital sine wave. That's my tuning tone. But um, it it all works, so you know, I'll just start noodling around here. Yeah. I like that you have that and your OCD on show and tell that because you've earned both of those. like Blade Runner in a box. <laughs> and I'm walking through that in the Space Odyssey. All right. Well, thank you. This is fantastic. See, Scott, where, where can people find out more information about this? He's gone. I think he's we a, lost he's him. He's in another galaxy. You there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just... Well, uh, I have a much better sounding demo of this uh, that I recorded. Uh, I threw it up as a blog post. So, uh, uh, you know, people can go there. If what they are you want talking about? That was fantastic. <laughs> that was a great thing. You're listening to this through the webcam mic. It is much, much better direct from a line out. As soon as I figure out how to wire my mixing desk into Google Hangouts, I can play stuff directly at you. But until then, I've got to uh, export uh, files off Ableton and uh, upload them. No, it sounds pretty good. And, and where can uh, people find more information about this and the name of this project and all that? Um, the first place to go would be csad.com chrominius, and I say that before I actually have a link on the site set up, but I'll go do that right after this show and tell. <laughs> uh, it will point you to, I usually blog these in, uh, I'll do a little bit on Adafruit, I do some in a couple of synthesizer forums, but you will see info. Okay. I'm in the middle of compiling online bombs for Mauser and DigiKey, so that if okay. people order the parts, they just go there and load the bomb and order it. So. OK. And then for everyone else out there, if you want to see a fantastic series of posts, um, check out the Adafruit blog. Um, God, yeah, they're awesome posts. He has a really good series. Um, there's a two-parter right now about some components that were purchased and oh, yeah. how an engineer and That's how... That's a good story. Yeah, it's a good story. That's so a good check story about the matched caps. All right. Well, you, of course, have an SCN on Show and Tell sticker, but as always, email support adafruit.com. I'll give you something else. Yeah, well, I'll stick. I'll stick them on these cases. <laughs> you have, that's a big board. You have space for yeah. like twelve stickers. 
All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. We'll see everyone next week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll you guys the real ones. As, see you later. As always. And we'll um, see you next week. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Noah and Pedro. You didn't see Carmen in a box Matt. today. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's cool, but it's... Great. Scott, Dave, Dan. Play us out. See Scott. All next week.